Hi, Spring fans. How you doing? I'm doing all right. As I record this, I'm in Germany, where I just spent a number of days working and talking with amazing people. And now I'm preparing to go to Barcelona, Spain, where I'll be uh, at Spring I.O. And it's going to be an amazing show in a beautiful southwestern European capital. Uh, I can't wait. And it's going to, of course, it's one of the best shows that caters to the spring community. Uh, Beautiful Barcelona, warm weather, tapas, amazing community. You might be thinking, it couldn't get better. And look, I'll be straight with you. It's pretty good. It's, it's pretty good. It's going to be dope. But if I'm honest, it's not the coolest thing that's happening in my life right now. You see, in a few short days, we'll release Spring Boot 3.1. 3.1 has a ton of new features. Obviously, you've got the usual batch of new dependency versions. There are some big new releases, including all the Spring Portfolio projects, Hibernate 6.2, Jackson 2.15, Makito 5, etc. But I won't get into the details there. There's just too much to look at, and we don't have the time. I also love the new auto configuration for the Spring Authorization Server. Yeah, that's right. Now you can stand up an authorization server with Spring Boot noise. This is not just a client or even a resource server. This is the OAuth2 identity provider itself. The Spring Security Authorization Server was actually an effort that we sort of started and we hoped the community would help uh, participate in, and they did. Uh, but it was also something that snowballed. People loved it. There were so many issues for it, so many people asking for things. Uh, and so it's actually been a very good uh, sort of project that just sort of grew out of community need and because of community need and because of feedback there, we were at some point pretty happy, pretty resigned to not having a particular story there, but people said, no, we want this. So this is a thing that you can customize every which way from Sunday. So it's natural that we deliver it as a set of auto configurations in Spring Boot. And now you can build your own OAuth2 IDP if you like. There's also new unified support for SSL across various Spring Boot integrations. Traditionally, we've had a number of places where users could use SSL, but they were duplicative. Now it's possible for a user to specify SSL trust material, such as uh, Java key stores and PEM encoded certificates that can be configured using properties and applied to connections of various types, such as embedded web servers, data services, REST template, web clients, and, and so on in a more consistent manner. This is a huge improvement in the status quo. And one of the things that I'm sure you'll notice when you start doing real production worthy work with Spring Boot. There's so much good stuff, my friends, but I don't want to talk about any of that stuff in this video. Instead, I want to look at some of the ways that Spring Boot 3.1 offers a light fast experience for both developers and machines. So let's dive right into it, my friends. In this video, we're going to cover two of its biggest features that will make being productive and rapid at your development even easier, namely support for test containers and Docker Compose. So let's start with Docker Compose and test container support by building a regular web application uh, that talks to us a uh, database using Spring Data JDBC. We're going to use Postgres. Uh, we're going to create a web app that uses the GraalVM native image support. So let's go to start.spring.io. We're going to build a new application. Very important. We're going to choose Spring Boot 3.1.0 snapshot. We're going to use the GraalVM native support. We're going to use dev tools. We're going to use test container support. We're going to use the web support and the Spring Data JDBC API and, of course, Postgres. We're going to go ahead and build a new application with all this stuff in mind. Just generate it and open it up in our IDE. All right, our application's open. It's just going to be a regular stock standard Spring Boot application. Let's just do the normal thing. We'll build an entity talking to our SQL database using Spring Data JDBC, like so, at ID. And we'll create an interface. So interface customer repository extends CRUD repository, managing entities of type customer whose primary key is of type integer. Uh, I'm going to create a HTTP endpoint, so customer HTTP controller. We'll just inject this customer repository in the constructor, as always. And we're just going to create an endpoint here, forward slash customers, that returns an iterable of customers, like so. So this dot repository at find all. Good. And this is just an HTTP controller, so we'll just use that. Very good. So there's our basic Spring application. Now what I want to do is I want to connect this to a SQL data store. In this case, we've got on our class path the Postgres support, right? So we could, we could definitely um, uh, do that, but I want to start with Docker 
compose support. So let's copy paste that and add the Docker compose support. Now this is one day going to be, hopefully soon be on the on the start.spring.io spring initializer, but for now we have to manually add it ourselves. Okay. Now what I would normally do is I'd go in here and I'd maybe I'd have a separate property file called application dash dev that properties or something like that. And I'd put in spring data source, data source, password, URL, etc. And then I'd start up a Docker image. And speaking of, let's copy and paste a Docker compose file from here into the demo. And you can see that Docker compose file looks like this. Pretty simple, right? Username, password, host, you know, it's local host, obviously. So this is a pretty stock standard Docker Compose file. And I would line up these usernames and passwords with what I specified here. And I'd make sure that when I'm using doing the development, I'd run it on that dev profile. Fine. But wouldn't it be nice if instead Spring Boot could find this Docker Compose file and start it up for me when the application starts up? Look at that. It not only found the application, it not only found the Docker Compose file, but it did indeed start the container for us. Starting, starting, waiting, it's healthy, and then we're ready to continue booting. Okay, great. Now, uh, this is a database, it's up and running, but you know we wanna interact with it, and right now there's no schema. So I wanna create a uh, schema file and a data file, but of course this is a remote database from the perspective of Spring Boot. So I'll tell it to initialize this schema for us, always. Okay, as opposed to the default, which is only when it's an embedded like H2 or something like that. Okay, fantastic. So we're gonna do that. Now we go here, we go here and we create a data.sql and we create a schema.sql. So the schema, of course, is just for our customer data. And we're being very careful because remember, it's going to rerun this every single time. So we're making sure to, you know, be as idempotent as we can. And then for the data, we'll just insert some people who are on the spring team. All right, there we go. There's our data.sql uh, and our schema.sql. Um, now, we're going to run this. And, you know, we could restart. But again, we've got dev tools on the class path. So what we're going to do is we're just going to recompile. Okay, recompile the project, command shift F9 in IntelliJ. So with that, we can go to the browser, localhost, get our data, it worked, great. Let's add a new endpoint here. Okay, and this endpoint uh, will be a uh, HTTP get as well, customers by name, iterable, customer by name. Okay. And of course here, the ID basically writes the code for us. Isn't that convenient? Look at that. Command shift F9, recompile, re and it's up and running. Josh, there's our endpoint. Oh, it didn't match anything there. Madura, there we go. I got two Maduras for some reason. Uh, and that's because I didn't take any care when I created this, the data rather, to delete everything that was in there already. So delete from customer, and then I'll just Fix that last problem, which is putting myself in there. Okay, command shift F9. There's the data. There's my name. Good, great. So I'm in there. It's got we've got our data. Testing te the Docker Compose support is really convenient because it allows me to automatically start and stop the container. Uh, and because I'm using Dev Tools, it's actually pretty quick. But that's not to say it couldn't be quicker. So one thing you might want to do is disable the lifecycle for Docker Compose like this, right? Start, stop, start and only, etc. And you can do all sorts of interesting things here. Remember, uh, this is Docker, and there are ways to tell it to pull down from different container registries if you're, for example, in an air-gapped environment. Uh, you can also use your own image. Let's say that you have your own build of Redis or of Postgres or whatever, uh, and you want to use that. It's possible to map that new container to the well-known names of containers that we look for, for the things that Spring Boot supports. For example, your typical SQL databases, your RabbitMQs, your whatever, all these different uh, things. Um, and what's happening behind the scenes is we have this new bit of indirection, right? Historically, when you used 
Spring Boot, you used some properties, Spring SQL, Spring that data source, that password, username, etc. That got mapped into a, for example, a data source, JavaX.SQL that data source. Well, now we've introduced a little bit of indirection in the form of a connection details. Okay, this connection details is just an interface, but there are a number of these, and we have you know the usual way we have a connection details that gets its properties from these property uh, from these property values in the environment, but also we have one implementation. We have implementations that can look for an existing container, uh, for example, in the using the Docker Compose Java API to programmatically ask it whether this container is running, or um, using test containers. I like Docker Compose, but it's kind of a one-size-fits-all solution, right? Either you want that to be run, and you can exclude certain things, but basically it's going to run this, and you have to like opt out of certain things. Uh, and it's sort of, you know, it's uh, very inflexible. You can, you can use this, and, and it's fine, um, but it is a little bit weird, frankly. I, I like Docker Compose a lot. I use it all the time. But what I really want is the ability to uh, have something like test containers in the mix. So let's get rid of this, okay? Good stuff. And you know, I don't really need that. You can you can use uh, Docker Compose. It works just fine, obviously. But for me, eh, not worth it. Not worth keeping the extra thing on the class path because we're going to use test containers. And test containers, we're going to bring that back into the mix. Test containers gives us a way to write a little bit of code. We have to write a little bit of code to create a new main class in our test context, okay? So we're going to call this test uh, demo application. <clears throat> and this is going to be a configuration class. It's going to have a public static void main, but we're not going to recreate the logic of public static void, public static void main. Instead, we're going to delegate to our demo application main. We're going to say we want to run with this with these arguments in this public static void main, but we also want to give it a new configuration class from which to draw some configuration. And that'll be this test demo application. So we're saying, do everything that you would have done in this one, but also augment the configuration classes with this particular class, and then run, okay? And the reason we want to do this is because we can now define a bean for Postgres, for example, okay? Using the test containers API. So we'll return new Postgres container. And by the way, look at that sweet, sweet control space ability. Right, control space. I hit you know control you know control space. I get the versions, all sorts of cool things there. Now, I told you that Spring will now it knows how to source credentials and, and connection details from the running container itself. We need to tell it that this is the bean that will provide that information to it. So we can do that by using at service connection. Okay, so this is a, a very convenient annotation. It tells Spring uh, that this is the thing that we care about. I'm going to go ahead and stop the existing one because we're going to start now from here, okay? Now the th thing is, I also want this container to endure longer than every single restart. I don't want to have to like restart the container each time. Um, so what I'll do is I'll use an annotation called restart scope, but you might have noticed it's not here. And that's because by default, the compilation, the, the, the dev tools is development only. And I'm going to turn it into test implementation. Okay, so command shift I, and restart scope. There you go. So this is going to tell Spring that, hey, we want this container started, but if it's already running, then just leave it alone. Leave it as is. Don't destroy it or anything like that. Let's go ahead and run this. Uh, oh, wait, actually, this has to point to the main application. Okay, now let's go ahead and run this. So it's up and running. It started dev tools. It started uh, our test container. Right, you can see it's gotten a connection to the Postgres instance, but this time it's using TC, right? So that's test containers behind the scenes doing its work. Okay, but still the same rules apply. All the stuff that we did before with Docker Compose still applies to this, but now we have the ability to, you know, uh, configure things. We can use some of the methods here to configure the container, for example. And best of all, this is all in our test code. It won't be packaged up in the production code. Okay, so let's go back to our controller demo application. And um, let's say that we wanted to have, oh, I don't know, let's just print out system out, getting a record by name, right? Name, okay? So there's this, command shift F9. Okay, 
Okay, there we go. So it was restarted in 0.2 seconds, right? The whole thing. So I go back here, that all works again, of course, that's still working, you know, really, really good experience, right? I'm able to uh, make a change and see the results almost in instantly, right? Command shift F9, scroll down, you can see it restarted it again, 0.2 seconds. Go back here, it's now 23, etc., etc., etc. So test containers is, I think, my favorite permutation of the support. Docker Compose works amazingly well, so does uh, uh, test containers, but w paired with the uh, one-two punch of the uh, dev tools and you know this really smart lifecycle support, you can now take some code that you've got in your organization, get clone it, load it into the ID, hit start, you've now got all the Docker instances, all the containers you need to run the system up and running with the application. Uh, you can control the life cycle, of course, you can do all that kind of stuff uh, very instantly, very quickly. Uh, and of course, you know, since we care about developer productivity, it's also nice to know that you can get uh, uh, machine productivity or machine efficiencies, right? Developer efficiencies and machine efficiencies. This is Spring Boot 3.0 after all. So if we wanted to, we could stop this application, go to the command line and build a GraalVM native image. So let's do that. There we go, there's our application. It compiled. Uh, we can run it, of course, by going to the build directory native native image, uh, and there's the application. The problem, of course, is that we don't have a data source. So uh, we can take my little script here, looks like this, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna set up environment variables, pointing to you know the Docker Compose image. We're gonna actually run Docker Compose, so we'll basically just go to the desktop here, There's my Docker Compose file and the script that'll set up those environment variables that contain the credentials that are required to connect to that instance. So I'll do Docker Compose up. And then we can do run. And now we can do run. And there's the application up and running. Uh, you know, as quick as can be, fully working. So we have the dev tools to make our development cycle as quick as possible, and we have the GraalVM native image support to make our uh, production run as quick as possible. All in this version of Spring Boot coming to you in a few short days. Download the bits now, try it out, let us know. See you on release day.